Hello, I'm Carl Rowland with Sherline Products. In this video, we're going to go over preloading our headstock bearings. First, we'll have an explanation, then we'll show you how we actually do it in our shop on our fixture, and then we'll go a little bit into the, uh, the 10,000 RPM pulley system and preloading for that. So as an explanation, these are the actual headstock bearings that go in our headstock, and these are a sealed bearing. So what you have here is you have a race on the inside, that's somewhat that's U-shaped on the inside, with an outer race, which is also U-shaped, and they contain the ball and the ball bearing inside. Okay, so there's a little bit of play laterally this way between the inner race and the outer race. Okay, there's got to be some play there, otherwise the balls just grind themselves to death inside the bearing. Okay? So when you preload the bearing, what you're doing is you have a bearing at the front and a bearing at the back and our preload nut right here. And the preload nut is pushing on the inner race only. And the back of our spindle shoulder is up against the inside race of the other bearing. So when you preload them, you're pushing the inside bearing on both balls. You're pinching it between the, the preload nut and the shoulder on the spindle. And you're getting rid of as much of this play as you can possibly get rid of. Okay. So we get it down to about two or three tenths. If you get it down to nothing, then your bearings are just gonna wear out really fast. Your headstock's gonna run really hot, okay? So a lot of our customers uh, will ask if they can just buy the spindle and the bearing and do this at home. And the answer is no, not really. So this video is sort of showing you why the answer is, is no. This is, this is not what most people have available in their home shop or garage. So this is our fixture right here and what we have is an eccentric, a bearing on an eccentric and it's pushing on a, a spindle that's inside this headstock that moves free inside a bronze bushing and on this side we have a dead center that is also spring loaded. So right now my preload nut is loose and what I'm going to do is put it on our fixture and it goes up against our floating headstock spindle here. And then we load it with our spring-loaded dead center on this end. And we clamp it down in place. Okay. All right. Then when we turn it on, okay, what's going to happen here is this eccentric bearing right here is pushing the spindle this way and this dead center with the spring is pushing it back. So you're basically working your spindle back and forth. And then we tighten the preload and we check the face of it to see how much the shoulder right here is actually moving back and forth. So we preload the bearing until our tense indicator gets down to two or three tenths. So right now I'm going to set this up. Got a Tommy bar that goes through our hole in the shoulder into a fixed hole below it so that I can turn the preload nut without turning the spindle. And then we have this monster wrench right here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to load the indicator till it actually reads. So right now we have about one and a half thousandths worth of preload. That's how much the spindle is moving back and forth. Okay, so as I tighten this down, and it was off a bit, I might have to tighten a few turns here. Okay, that's looking good. Okay. What I'm going to do now is slowly tighten it until the preload gets down where I want it. Okay, so we're about half. Still about half. Okay, it's about three. Okay, I'm about two or three right there. So what I'm going to do now is tighten the set screw on the side okay, and see if that changes it at all. Sometimes it'll get more, it'll get more and sometimes less when you tighten up the preload nut. So that's about three tenths right there. Okay, normally we go about two tenths, but for the video I'm just going to stop right there. Okay, so that's where we set the preload. Turn this off. Move this guy out of the way. Okay. 
Okay, and with the preload set there, it spins nice and smooth. There's, you don't hear any clicking or anything. Um, so this, this guy's set pretty much dead on right now. Now, if you have a, you buy a 10,000 RPM pulley setup, tells you that what you want to do is first you loosen the set screw in the preload in the preload nut and then you back this off okay and now if I just back this off the preload hasn't changed I can't just back this off and all of a sudden it changed um, because there's a, a tight press fit on the front bearing journal and a slight press fit on the back so once you load it it's loaded so what you have to do is We'll loosen the set screw, use our Tommy bar, and back off the preload nut. And the instructions are saying to, to back it off about two degrees, which they're saying with a six inch wrench, which is as easily about 12 inch, so a six inch wrench is about there. It's a turn of about 100 to 200 thousandths. So I'm gonna break it loose right there snug again. I would just break it loose a hair. Then what you're gonna have to do, so that's about the two degrees, is you get a plastic mallet or, a, um, or you get a steel mallet, but you put a wood block here. If you hit this with steel, you just obliterated the back of your spindle. So we have plastic head mallet, you give it a good sharp wrap. So now this guy's loose again. Then you're gonna put it in and tighten it down to the point where, I can say right about there. So now if I check this again, just after doing that, you'll be able to see what that difference is. Move it in again. Okay, so that tap on there right now, and I'm about six tenths, okay? So um, it could be just a little bit tighter than that. Uh, six tenths, you're really not gonna notice on anything that you run on this, especially if it's your mill. Uh, if, you, if you got a mill with a 10,000 RPM spindle on it, it's to, to basically run small end mills or engraving bits or something like that. Um, and that six tenths is, well within tolerance for a 10,000 RPM spindle, okay? Without that, without that six tenths, and I think they, in the instructions it says three to four tenths, okay? Um, I don't think you're gonna get three to four tenths with a tap at home, but you can see what that tap just got you, and that's five to six tenths, which again, you're, you're never gonna see that in your machine as far as uh, holding any kind of tolerance. What it will do, though, is allow you to spin this at 10,000 RPMs now without frying your bearings. What I would recommend if you go to a 10,000 RPM spindle is you leave the original spindle on there, you set it at the high RPM, which is normally 2,800, and you let it run for 20 minutes or so, and you put your hand on it and see what the headstock feels like temperature-wise. It's going to get it's going to get warm. Okay, but it shouldn't get to a point where it's too hot to touch or uncomfortably warm. So you see what the temperature feels like. Then you put your 10,000 RPM spindle setup on it after you've adjusted your bearings. Put it all back on and turn it up to 10,000 RPMs and let it run for 20 minutes and see what the temperature difference is. Um, if it's getting hot, then you still have too much preload on it. So go through this process and back it off just a little bit more. Uh, make sure that you do uh, tighten your set screw after you do your, your preload. And another one, if you take these uh, preload nuts all the way off for any reason, there's a small piece of nylon that we put at the bottom of the set screw hole so that when you tighten these up, it's squashing the nylon against the thread so the set screw is not going to destroy your thread. If you don't keep that in there or it falls out and you don't replace it, then when you tighten the set screw, you're going to bugger the threads on this and that means you pretty, pretty much are not going to get this preload nut off ever again or at least not without a lot of effort. So anyhow, 
That's our explanation on how to adjust the preload bearings in your headstock, how we do it in the factory, and how you can do it at home. Thank you very much.